Hello everyone, in this video, we are going to have a look at GPT-4 offering of Azure OpenAI service. If you want to use this service, what you can do is you can come to this page, the official documentation for models in Azure OpenAI. You can come to this page and we have all the models that are available, all the types of models that are available. And in this section, we have this form, apply by filling out this form. We have this link here. And if I go into that, you can submit this form to get access to Azure OpenAI GPT-4 models. This can usually take from two weeks to a month and that's uh, how long it took for me. These models can only be used with the chat completion API. This, you can't use this with the completions playground. I will cover that later. So if you look here, these GPT-4 models, these are not available in all the regions. These are only available in some of the regions. So if you want to use GPT-4 models, you should, you should go with one of these regions when creating your Azure OpenAI resource. And when it comes to GPT-4, there are, as you can see, there are two types of models. There are two models. Now let's try to uh, compare these two models. As you can see, we have two types. We have the, the 8K version and the 32K version. 8K version supports around 6,000 words and the 32K version, it supports up to 25,000 tokens. That is similar to a 100 page book, right? And there's a difference between the price as well, the price that you have to pay per thousand tokens. And if you really think about it with GPT-4, 32K version, you can insert a 100 page book. And for that prompt, for that API request only, you have to pay $2. So as you can see, it's really expensive. And now if I move into Azure portal, as you can see, I have already provisioned an Azure OpenAI service resource. And I have created this resource in Canada East region. Now, if you look at the, the regions that these models are available in, we have the Canada East there. So we can use this OpenAI resource for working with GPT-4 models. Let me open the Azure OpenAI Studio. All right, now we have this familiar view. If I go into the deployment section, and as you can see, I don't have any deployments. For deploying a GPT-4 model, what I can do is I can just click on this button and I can select a model. In this region, the Canada East region, these are the available models. And as you can see, we have the GPT-4 and GPT-4 32K models. And in addition to that, we have the 3.5 Turbo version as well. I'm gonna go with GPT-4 model and I can provide a name for it. I'm just gonna call it GPT-4. In this section, we can assign a content filter to this as well. If I want the content to be filtered in a certain way, the content filters, I'm gonna cover this in a separate video. And also in addition to that, we can limit the tokens per minute rate, as you can see in thousands. For example, if I put 1K here, this will be the number of tokens the model would process per minute. I'm just gonna keep this as default and that is 10K and then I'm gonna just create the model. As you can see, within like two seconds, the model got created. And now if you go into the completion playground, as you can see, as I told you earlier, we can't use GPT-4 models in the completion playground and we have to go to chat completion playground to use it. As you can see, if you look around the UI, there's nothing new here. It's just the same UI. There will be nothing new added because of its GPT-4. And some people, they expect GPT-4 to read images as well, but this still does not support like image inputs. And if you really want to process an image and if you want GPT-4 to answer questions, what you can probably do is you can just use another Azure service like Azure Vision APIs to do that and then pass that input to a GPT-4 model. So that's the only available option. So as you can see, there's nothing new here in the deployment section. We can control the number of pass messages to be included in the, when we pass this chat API JSON. And in the parameters, we have, you know, the same parameters. We have the max token count, temperature, and the same token count for the probabilities. The only difference here is that when it comes to the input token count, we have 8,000 tokens now. I've been using this service for a while, but I didn't notice any significant improvements when it comes to the day-to-day -day questions that we ask from this service. The only difference that I saw is that it could answer, it has a greater reasoning ability. So it, you can ask really hard, hard mathematical questions and it will answer. Let's just compare these two models a bit. Let's, let's uh, open them side by side. Now I have another GPT 3.5 uh, model deployment as well. Let me just open it up now. 
Alright, as you can see on the left we have the GPT-335 Turbo, on the right we have GPT-4. Let's ask some questions from these two models, let's see if there's any difference here. Um, so let's first ask, what's your GPT version? Yeah, it says it's based on GPT-3 model, um, but these things we can't really uh, expect these models to answer correctly. As you can see, now if you look at the parameters, um, the I'm using the same parameters as well. If I scroll up and if I ask the same question, let's see what this gives us. Yeah, so this is the response that we're getting and let's see, let's see what else we can do here. Let's try to find a mathematical question. Let's try to, let's see whether this can answer those questions. Alright, now I'm in this uh, page where we have uh, math questions uh, and let's see uh, if this can answer, you know, one of these questions. I'm going to copy this. Let's try to find the correct answer here. So answer D is the uh, the right answer, as you can see, and that is 50,400 ways we can uh, that we can arrange this. Let's ask the, the same question from uh, GPT-3 and GPT-4. Let's see the output that we'll get. Okay, as you can see, it is reasoning and it gives us this answer here. Let's do ask the same question from the uh, from the GPT-4 version as well. Yeah, as you can see, it does not give me the answer in this case. But when I tested earlier, this gave me the right answer. But let's let's try again. Let's play around with this a little bit. Let's see whether this can do this right. And let's let's just post this question here. All right, so yeah, 21 is the answer that we get for this question in GPT 3.5 version. And let's try the same with the uh, GPT 4 one as well. All right, 756. Let's see whether we have that. Yep, that is the right answer. So as you can see, in some cases, uh, GPT-4 performs better when it comes to these these, uh, these advanced reasoning kind of scenarios. But when it comes to the daily use, asking basic questions and things like that, these two models, they perform almost the same. Um, but when it, when it involves advanced uh, reasoning, like for example, you know, solving mathematical questions, and I've also noticed, uh, let's say, um, uh, writing poems and things like that it can it has very uh, good significant uh, it has very good uh, significant uh, reasoning abilities now let's let's ask it to write a poem about microsoft azure with all the words should you know starting with the letter a let's see what gpt4 gives us all right okay all right, so now let's try the same with uh, GPT-3 as well. Yeah, it uses a lot of other uh, words, so it doesn't understand these nuances. All right, now let's let's try a few more things. Let's uh, let's see. Let's ask whether it can explain the the plot of Breaking Bad. Um, Ball chemistry teacher. It's it's pretty good. Yeah, let's see uh, what GPT-3 uh, will output here. Yeah, as you can see, GPT-4 is doing a better job. And, and when it comes to coding, I haven't seen any uh, significant improvements in GPT-4, but it could be just me. But let me know if you uh, if you find GPT-4 better when it comes to coding and GPT models. These are not dedicated for coding, actually. Uh, let's try to ask, uh, write an HTML page that it displays the, the Mandelbrot set in an HTML canvas. Let's see how, how good this uh, these two models would do this. All right, and now let's copy this and paste this in a, a JS fiddle. Let's see like uh, what it has done. All right, as you can see, GPT-4 has done a good job. And let's see what uh, what uh, GPT-3.5 would do. Yeah, it's writing a lot of codes, as you can see. All right, let me just copy this one and go into JS fiddle and let's paste it here. Let's run it again. Yeah, as you can see, now if you if you compare these uh, these two, there's a significant difference. Then I see some of it here, and this one it's like it's perfectly um, the uh, the limits of 
the set it has drawn correctly so this is the performance when it comes to these two models and let's just try adding one more thing let's ask both of it to uh, add a slider to control the the zoom level I'm just gonna ask the same question from both of these models now let's see all right so I'm getting this this error here now let me just copy the code and just paste it here I'm gonna run it and there's a slider it works correctly now uh, it's zooming around the the center point of the Mandelbrot set and uh, let's try to even though it's not correctly fitted so let's see let's try to uh, copy this and uh, paste it here Run it on it okay and we have the slider on the top here we have it on bottom you know these are random things and yeah so it's just it's it's working in reverse I have I haven't given that instruction so in this case it just zooms in and in this case when I increase it uh, it zooms out all right so that's the uh, the differences so, so those, those are the differences and let's see let's uh, let's do one more thing and let's ask it to um, add a four buttons and see whether I can uh. and the next thing is now if you compare the GPT-3 version and GPT-4 version uh, we got this token limit warning but here in the GPT-4 version we are not getting that all right now let's see I'm just gonna copy it and yeah it's it works perfectly I can uh, click these buttons and uh, navigate the set all right now let me ask the same question from this model as well and probably uh, before doing that I should uh, reduce the number of tokens number of messages and let me just try again of that one I'm just gonna pass in this message here the same message all right now I'm gonna copy it and let's see uh, what this will do yeah as you can see it it is a okay yeah it's not working uh, comparatively gpt4 model it did a way better job uh, the zooming it's it's kind of invert inverted and that is because i haven't given the instructions required for you to do that all right so those are the the differences that i see in this model so now the question is since we have gpt4 should we use gpt3 anymore uh we should still use gpt4 based on the situation like because you know the, even though these gpt4 models that are good at certain cases like advanced reasoning and um and maybe manipulating language and things like that it's more expensive and there's a lot of things that we can get done with gpt 3.5 so we should still use GPT 3.5 but only in very specific scenarios we can use GPT 4 that is what I can tell you about the the use of it and now if I go into the uh, the full screen uh, GPT 4 view now in my previous videos I've shown you how to use the API to get the the responses get the outputs from these models there's no difference when it comes to the way that we interact with these models now we can just uh, let's see uh, we can clear the chat and let's see and let me just uh, view the code so this is the code that we can use and i'm just going to copy the code here and let's try to run this in python and now what i need is the key i'm just gonna uh, copy it as well all right now let me just paste the key here directly all right now let's just see in the messages you know we have the uh, the input and the output as well of the previous previous attempt as you can see we're getting the response similarly to previous api invocations there's no difference when it comes to the structure of the message that we are sending and we're getting back so the name has changed from gpt35 turbo to gpt4 and it has more reasoning abilities like the uh, the ones that we have tested earlier all right now this is what i wanted to cover in this video i will be looking into more things that gpt4 can do in my upcoming videos if you have any video suggestions please let me know in the comments down below and if you learned something please like this video and subscribe i will see you in my next video and thanks for watching